What's going on everybody? It's your boy Skull Kid and today I'm here to bring you the first FL Studio 8 tutorial. Um, basically all I'm going to be showing you in this tutorial is the interface and a couple basic things you should know. I'm not going to get into any productions yet. You know, I'm not going to make a composition, but you'll get the basic idea of how to use this software. So let's get started. Alright, up here we've got, you know, file, edit, channels, view, options, tools, and help. Basic stuff that you'll probably see in most programs for Windows. But, um, in file we've got most of the stuff you've already seen before, new, open, save. But, got a couple things you may not have seen before. New from template, which basically just has a bunch of preset templates with sounds that have already been added so when you start it up you can see you got a kick, a clap, a hat, a sub, a scratch, a synth and an effect that are already loaded in so you can already just start you know load up the hip hop template and get right to it but I always start with an empty template you know that's just me but another cool template you can use is the mastering template in the utility folder and what this is is a bunch of preloaded effects in the master channel in the mixer and these effects just enhance the quality of the sound so everything sounds a little bit cleaner if you use this template so you can use that if you want um other than that you got import from MIDI files and beats to slice and export which is rendering in FL Studio. You can render waves, MP3s, OGGs, and MIDIs. And uh, I'll show you the render properties real fast. Um, just type in render one. Once you've uh, decided on where you want to save the file and what you want to call it, this screen will come up here, this little menu. And um, we've got the properties here. For looping mode, just put it on cut remainder. For the sampler interpolation, um, this is basically just you know how good the quality of the production is. Linear being the worst, and 512 point sync being the best. If you try to render in 512 point sync and you have a really bad computer, it will take a long time. You see, you click on it, this screen will always come up. So, I mean, unless you have a really good computer and you are an impatient person, you don't want to use that. So, I mean, stick with linear when you start off, I guess. You know, it's not bad quality at all. It's still really good quality. It's just 512 is the best. You know, 256 is usually what I do. But, you know, you can just use linear if you want. Um, other than that, you don't need to tweak anything else. Just whenever you're ready to render, hit start after that. So close that. Um, no. Okay, we've got edit. Basic stuff here. Channels. And we will get into channels later. I'm not going to tell you guys anything about this yet. So don't worry about channels. For view. This just shows you, you know, all your windows, what do you want to see, what you don't want to see. Options, just different options you can mess with. Don't really have to mess with too much, but I'm going to show you guys something in audio settings. Alright, once you click on audio, this menu will come up and you will see a buffer length slider. Now I'm going to show you a demonstration of tweaking the buffer length real fast. Now, if your buffer length is all the way down and you try to play a sound, this is what the instruments sound like. Now, I'm going to bring it about right here, kind of the default buffer length. This is what it's going to be like. You see, it reacts quickly. So when I click on it, you know, right after I click, I hear the sound. And, you know, you can actually hear the sound that you're clicking on. It's not all distorted. 
So, I mean, usually when you're starting out, this is what you want your buffer length to be on because most computers have, you know, basic computers have this kind of processor. So, you know, it's good to just leave it here. You're not really going to be um, doing anything crazy. Just make sure you have all your other programs closed when you use this because it does use a lot of your processor when you have a lot of sound. Now, if I have this all the way up, I click and then two seconds later I hear the sound so it's better for your processor but there's a delay so what you want to do unless you have a godlike processor you want to bring it down I mean really you don't even need a godlike processor I'm lying when I say this because I'm using a laptop but it just like I said it just depends on the computer you're using so you know, tweak it to your satisfaction. Alright. Um, don't worry about tools. Help. If you get stuck and you know you want to figure something out and you can't find a tutorial for it, you can either recommend that I make one or you can look through the contents. I mean, my tutorials are gonna be very hands-on. I'm gonna do a lot of demonstration, but if you just want to find something real fast, look through the contents. There's a huge reference manual here that will show you a lot.